In 2020, the cruise industry experienced the most destructive blow to its reputation since the Titanic. Tested positive for the virus. The outbreak aboard a cruise ship in Japan. As coronavirus spread through its bowels. Here we are quarantined, healthy people and sick people in the same location. So many health authorities around the world calling it essentially a petri dish for the coronavirus. 700 people were infected and 14 died on Diamond Princess. Famously quarantined in Japan's Tokyo Bay for a month, many ships were prevented from docking in fear of the virus spreading, and many travelers and crew members remained stranded, not sure how soon they could go back home. In just over a few months, the image of cruise ships transformed completely from a fun way to relax to a dangerous, plague-ridden death trap. As a result, the industry experienced an 81% reduction in passengers compared to 2019. Two years later, the industry is finally bouncing back. The new CLIA report predicts that by the end of 2023, the passenger numbers will surpass the 2019 levels. According to all projections, the industry will keep growing, perhaps even at faster rates than before. So let's talk about the cruise comeback and the new era of cruise travel. Before the pandemic, cruising was a booming industry with a 6.6% growth rate. In 2019 alone, it hosted 29.7 million passengers worldwide, all that despite being one of the most isolated sectors in travel distribution. The world's overall tendency is to book travel services online, but 70% of cruisers still rely heavily on traditional travel agents for knowledge and advice. Let's talk about some characteristics of the cruise industry. Well, first, cruising requires some experience navigating. Passengers have to make many decisions. The destination, the cruise line, the type of cruise, cabin, and dining options, things to do, etc. All this can be intimidating for a rookie, so having an agent to assist is very helpful. Every decision has a different price point, and the commitment is much higher than when booking a hotel or a flight. A week-long cruise requires much more attention than a two-hour flight. Besides, while offerings from hotels and airlines are somewhat uniform, each cruise line can have a different personality and target audience. So you need to make sure you don't drag your kids to a ship full of party animals. The fact we can't go is total bull To ensure that their passengers are getting exactly what they were hoping for, cruise lines closely cooperate with travel agents. In fact, agent commission is the largest article of overhead cost the cruise has, since, once again, agents bring cruise companies 70% of their sales. Moreover, the cruising market is fragmented, with companies not sharing any platforms or databases. This is very different from how the rest of the travel sector operates where sharing and collaboration ensure online distribution. All of that means that cruise lines aren't eager to help travelers explore those options digitally and independently. Cruise booking websites are not on par with the modern online travel agencies that we're used to and urge customers to communicate with an agent to do the booking. And OTAs that have cruises on them are few and far between. This isolation, though seemingly working in favor of cruises, has one big drawback. Younger generations of travelers are put off by cruise adventures, for now, because the industry is going through a change. Here are a few trends painting the new image of cruising. In March of 2022, the CDC finally removed the Travel Health Advisory for cruise ships, thus authorizing the return to pre-pandemic operations. Following that, Carnival Cruise Line, one of the largest cruise brands in the world, reported its highest booking week in its 50-year history. The unprecedented enthusiasm reflects the overall change in the cruise industry. Welcome, good morning. Washi washi, happy, happy. 
For a few years now, the average age of a cruise passenger has been around 46. But it won't be much longer. Exposed to the cruise experience when they were kids, many millennials and Gen Zers are already embarking on their first journeys. That means that traditional cruising is getting an upgrade to satisfy the next generation of passengers. There are several ways this is manifested. First is the introduction of more adventurous and non-mainstream activities. Virgin Voyage's Scarlet Lady is a great example. Debuted in 2020, this hip 18-plus cruise line has Instagrammable locations, modern dining options, a focus on wellness, and even a tattoo parlor. U River Cruises also cater to the adventurous and the young eager to experience Europe in a more authentic way, with classes led by locals and self-guided tours. And the workation trend has not been ignored either. Superfast Wi-Fi is heavily advertised, with some cruises being promoted as the best place for remote work. But trendy experiences are not the only way cruises are trying to win younger generations over. They're also betting on sustainability. In the past few years, the movement for eco-conscious travel has been growing. Flight shame, carbon offsets, and authentic travel habits created a new reality where you can't not address how your business is actively pro-sustainability. The cruise industry has a negative environmental impact, including marine pollution and massive carbon emissions, among the rest. To engage the ethically-minded passenger, many brands incorporate green practices. This goes beyond the elimination of plastic and paper waste on board. In 2018, liquefied natural gas, or LNG, was introduced as the world's cleanest marine fuel. And starting 2022, all major cruise companies are launching LNG-powered ships. That means that people who wouldn't consider cruise travel because they're eco-driven concerns now may revise their opinions. More changes derived from the active COVID era. Among many protocols and practices established by COVID, one will likely prevail. We expect cruise apps and devices to become even more popular and functional. Bracelets for contact tracing introduced by Royal Caribbean and a health assessment app employed by Carnival Cruise Line are some examples of contactless cruise experiences. In 2022, most cruise companies had an app in which passengers can view activity schedules, book excursions, order in-room delivery, and even remotely open their room doors and control the lights. These new additions to the traditional cruise experience are already working. In 2020, 71% of millennials had a more positive attitude to cruising than two years prior. One final step to attracting younger, more digitally savvy crowds has not yet been taken. We're talking about the online booking problem. Cruises are not easy to sell. It smells like shit. So how can cruise lines enhance digital distribution when the product itself is so difficult to fit into the OTA self-service template? There must be a new model in place where all parties thrive and balance each other out. For example, incorporate travel agents to answer chat questions online. This way, future passengers could review their options online, but consult with specialists when they need it. A different model would be to let OTAs purchase rooms and suites in bulk and let them manage agent customer communications. Finally, Perhaps the industry should embrace self-service. With the help of analytics and personalization, you could offer customers the exact services they would enjoy and help ease choice paralysis for them. Of course, this method requires solid data management in place, which not many cruise companies currently prioritize. The online distribution for cruises will be reinvented. And along with a more sustainable, modern, and technological cruise experience, it will shape how a new generation of passengers will keep cruising. Yeah.